Hello, everyone. Welcome to Avaya's Healthy Aging Curriculum. I am Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for being here. Our fellow teacher, Lisa Jackson, is here today to talk with you about cardiovascular disease from a functional medicine perspective. She's going to be talking about a personal journey to health. Lisa is the founder of Carpe Diem Wellness. She is certified in functional medicine, functional diagnostic nutrition, and she's also a certified health coach. She is also a registered yoga teacher and retired registered nurse. Lisa's goal is to inspire, educate, and empower optimal health regardless of age or diagnosis. And she understands how the body has the innate ability to heal from within when eliminating hidden internal and external stressors. Thank you so much for being here with us, Lisa. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be part of uh, your Avaya University and your summit and all the wonderful things that you're doing. Yeah, I'm so excited to, to dive into this with you. And I'm so glad you're talking about cardiovascular disease because that is right such a major, major issue in our society today. So I'm, I'm so excited to hear what you have to say and hear your journey. So would you start us off by sharing a little bit about your, about your story? I know in your book you wrote about it and like what, what, what went on in your story to inspire you to do the work you do today? Thanks for asking. And actually, the book I wrote was not about my journey specifically. Okay. It was about my daughter's journey um, when she was diagnosed, my 28-year-old, with cancer. And, um, and as a mother and a parent, um, the lessons learned, and I was uh, just getting into integrative nutrition at that point. Um, and through that, I was able to, um, with my daughter uh, doing her integrative cancer program, I actually healed my own autoimmune disease that I'd had for decades. I had worn bifocals for decades. I had readers in every room of the house because I couldn't see to, to read, I couldn't see to drive. And um, I wore contacts, bifocal contacts 24 by seven, slept in them, did all the things you're not supposed to do. And after about six or nine months, radically changing my diet and um, uh, my contacts were blurry. I figured it was just time for a new prescription. Uh, went to the eye doctor and he said, your eyes have improved by over 50%, which is wow. why I couldn't see out of my contacts anymore. He goes, I don't know what you're doing, but keep on doing it. You don't need that anymore. And as a conventionally trained registered nurse, who knew that you could reverse? <laughs> um, you could improve your eyesight so dramatically. You could reverse autoimmune disease for decades. Two decades I'd had uh, an autoimmune disease, vitiligo, and my skin was starting to repopulate. Um, and of course, my daughter got a clean PET scan. Um, so uh, radical, radical change. Wow. And, um, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, okay. So you, that, wow. And what an amazing, an interesting and amazing way that you were able to, you know, actually reverse that and going through your daughter's journey. And is your daughter okay today? She is. She's been deemed uh, cured <laughs> uh, because it's been more than six years um, uh, for her cancer. Um, she did relapse and uh, it did come back again and we had a, um, another journey and I, I wrote about that in the book too. Uh, you know, chronic disease, cancer is a chronic disease and um, NIH has a whole um, handout uh, study on that it's a, a preventable and if it's preventable, it's also <laughs> reversible with mm -hmm. diet and lifestyle and, and I'm a firm believer that um, if you want radical remission, you have to have an integrative approach and you have to uh, change um, uh, some of the stressors that created the environment for cancer to thrive in the first place. You're not just caught, you don't catch it. It's not a, uh, genetics can play a part, but you're not bound by your genes. So uh, that has been the motivation to fuel my passion into uh, functional medicine and integrative medicine and, um, in the, in the process, uh, as I said, it's a journey. I, I put together a few slides here, whoops, <laughs> um, a few slides <laughs> to kind of make my point. Yeah. Um, oh, and there's my book. Uh, but uh, one of the business I had with my husband was we um, 
took uh, plastic out of landfill and made infrastructure. So we built the, actually the world's first bridge out of uh, recycled plastics. Wow. <laughs> our bridge. And so the lesson learned is we have to rethink everything. And the things that we thought are set in stone are not. <laughs> uh, and so I'm asking the listeners to really have an open mind here and to know and believe that we do have the innate ability to heal from within. If we can remove our internal hidden stressors and our external stressors. And um, sometimes if you're sitting on five tacks, you remove one or two tacks, you're still sitting on three tacks. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in this process, in this journey, we've had to learn to remove all the tacks. And in my, you know, daughter's case, that was true. And in, in my personal journey that we'll talk about today, that's true also. Um, so even though, you know, I look good on this picture and um, look pretty good for being 60 years old, um, you can't tell a book by its cover, <laughs> right? So um, I was so passionate about this business. I actually wanted to do a documentary on it, on my daughter. And, you know, she's a private person. I, I couldn't believe that we could get such dramatic results from diet and lifestyle change. Who knew mm -hmm. that it had such a big piece uh, that we could have these things? So... I was on a mission and uh, I was working 30 hours a week for a uh, oncology hematology group trying uh, as executive director to bring in an integrative wellness program. I was burning the candle at both ends. My sister's twin, uh, my twin sister's husband was diagnosed with kidney cancer, was dying <laughs> of cancer. Uh, I had private patients of my own clients and then I was studying to get my certification in functional medicine and functional diagnostic nutrition. I was burning the candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. And uh, on my brother-in-law's deathbed, I, he was constantly measuring his blood pressure. And I took my blood pressure and said, holy cow, is this thing right? So I took it to the uh, fire station up the street to say, uh, can you make sure my blood pressure cuff is accurate? And it was even higher than this. It was, I don't remember, mm -hmm. 230 over... Wow. It was crazy. It was stroke high. They put me in the ambulance and took me to the ER and I'm saying, this is not good for my business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I'm the health coach. I'm not supposed to, I should know what to do. Um, but that's why cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. It is right. hidden stressors. You can't tell your blood pressure is this freaky high. Right. And I had uh, reflex and uh, mental, emotional stress. Um, you know, I was having, trouble remembering things. You walk in a room, you forget, you know, classic symptoms of stress, brain fog. Um, by the third day working at the clinic, uh, where we saw 60 patients a day, always had a migraine, <laughs> you know, all these symptoms of dis-ease in the body. Um, and I had this, you know, fungus on my toenails that just wouldn't go away. Well, this is signs of simmering infections. Um, so I went to an old friend of mine, one of the top cardiologists, conventionally trained cardiologists in the region, great guy. And I came, you know, I knew enough to ask questions, the right questions. What's the cause, root cause? Why am I having this hypertension? You know, I do yoga, I'm, I, I lost my excess weight, <laughs> I'm eating really well. Why would I have cardiovascular disease? Is it mental emotional stress? Is it heavy metal toxicity? Is it gut dysbiosis? Is it food sensitivities? Is it hormone imbalance, thyroid, adrenal fatigue? Do, am I getting the right nutrition for my heart? Is it malabsorption, maldigestion? Do I have clogged detox pathways? I already knew I had the genetics, um, schnips, uh, polymorphisms that are not, uh, that I need extra support for detoxification. Um, you know, I wanted my cardiologist to partner with me in a functional medicine approach to solve these issues. But guess what he said? What? <laughs> Face it, Lisa. Everyone will have to be on blood pressure medication when they get older. Oh, just no. <laughs> <laughs> so that got my passion. <laughs> yep. My blood up. And, uh, and so I really dug into my own journey. You know, heal or heal thyself. We have to, we cannot be giving, giving, giving so much to everybody else and ignoring our own health this is very common with healthcare professionals. We are, um, we have a hard time prioritizing ourselves. And it turns out, yes, I had every one of these things that could be identified and tested with an, in functional medicine. Um, hmm. 
And this is the problem with conventional medicine. And I love conventional medicine. It is life-saving. This is not a us versus them discussion. In fact, I did that for a while. I was going to heal healthcare. I was fighting the fight, you know, working for the conventional oncology group. I was going to educate everybody and get everybody on my side to talk about nutrition and <laughs> functional medicine. Um, but this is the, you know, so, so medicine is fantastic for acute care. If you have a broken bone, mm -hmm. if you're having that heart attack, you want to go to the ER, <laughs> like I did. Twice yes. I ended up in the ER. Um, you want to get it taken care of. You don't want to ignore it. Um, but the conventional approach looks at an elephant, and uh, had I just gone down the conventional approach only, I would have seen a gastroenterologist. I would have had an endocrinologist for my hormones. I would have had uh, for my thyroid. I would have had a gas. Uh, gynecologist for my hormones. I would have gone to a psychiatrist for my mental emotional mm -hmm. <laughs> <And> a cardiologist. <laughs> Who am I missing? Um, Somebody. The dermatologist, which right. I've been to for years for my autoimmune vit vitiligo. And I would have been on seven different treatments and seven different medications to mask the symptoms. And I would have been on blood pressure medication for life. And I was on the beta blocker. I was on the ACE inhibitor. And at one time in my life, in my 30s, I was on statins. I mean, I've had a high cholesterol my entire life. Got it. So um, a lot of people ask me, what's functional medicine? Yes, I'm, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for, for those watching right now who don't know what that is, what, what is this? What is the thing? <laughs> so it's science-based. It's not woo-woo. <laughs> it's based on the N of one, bio chemical individuality, that we're all different. You know, we're trained in healthcare for here's the diagnosis and here's the pill. <laughs> for every ill, there's a pill for the symptom. We are not trained to look at everything as a whole, the interconnectedness of the human body. That, and it's more of a, a web-like, it's a uh, functional medicine practitioners do puzzle piecing. You know, you may have five or six things going on, as I did, and if we only remove one or two, you've still got the other three causing inflammation. So it is looking at you as a whole, and it's looking for the clinical imbalances or the subclinical imbalances. And this is true for the functional medicine testing. We're testing things that the conventional medicine is not testing for, and so therefore it goes undiagnosed or untreated. And we are preserving the organs. If you have a gallbladder attack, we're not taking the gallbladder out. We're saying, why are you having a gallbladder attack? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you have maldigestion? Um, I had one client who was a doctor of dentistry who gained 60 pounds the year after she had her gallbladder out. And it wasn't until we sat mm -hmm. down and started looking at the health history that I said, you've gained 60 pounds in the last year and that's when you had your gallbladder out? And she had not even put the two and two together. Wow. That, yes. <laughs> we got rid of the symptom. I don't have gallbladder attacks anymore, but she's not digesting her fats and her food, and she put on 60 pounds. Right. Oh. So this is the difference. And this is a, uh, just right from the American Association of Functional Medicine's page. And then I love this quote. And my brother-in-law saw this on one of my blog posts. And he says, oh, that's not true we're not ranked 37th in the world, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, the World Health Organization does rank us. We are the lowest uh, health outcomes of anyone in the world, <laughs> of all the d developing nations. Um, yeah, the, bankru and, the bankruptcy thing is crazy too, right? Up to 90% of bankruptcies due to unpaid medical bills. That's crazy. And this has happened to members of my family. So I am mm. intimately aware of this. And one out of two Americans didn't die of heart disease. You know, had I um, not treated my own, I could easily have uh, be one of those statistics mm. very easily. And, um, you know, like uh, a lot of famous people who look and, and are doing the right things and then suddenly drop dead. Um, right. Yeah, one out of three didn't die of cancer. That's so near and dear to my heart. We have so much uh, cancer in our family that um, I'm really on a mission to mm -hmm. uh, change this trajectory. Mm -hmm. And of course, one out of six didn't die of diabetes. Diabetes is an, often the precursor to all of this. Right. And, um, and healthcare is, it's not sustainable financially. We cannot keep um, this type of healthcare system 
and uh, where we are not looking at prevention and uh, root cause analysis. It's, it's not sustainable. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be interesting in the next, right? <clears throat> um, God, I don't know, 20, 20, 10, 20, 30 years and in, in the world of the right baby boomers and, and getting older and all that kind of stuff and what's going to happen, right? I think it was, wasn't there a statistic this was several years ago, but it was right. Like the, the generation of children were going to live shorter lives than their parents based on obesity, diabetes, like all of these early onset diseases and stuff that's happening now. Yeah. That was a statistic that just hit me right in the heart Uh Um, that my children, (laughs) my children are the first generation that are expected not to outlive myself. And as a mother of four and two grandchildren, well, this is not acceptable. Yeah. We have got to, to change this. We have to learn and we have to see there is a better way uh, for sure. Um, so, you know, we look at the imbalances and, um, and we do functional medicine testing. And, and I like to use the acronym HIDDEN. Hormones, immune system, diet, detoxification, energy production, and, and um, the nervous system. We look at all of these things with functional testing. And the bottom line is, I don't care how old you are, and I don't care what your disease or diagnosis is, it doesn't matter. If you do these three things consistently, you can heal and repair. This is what your body needs to maximize what you need in your unique body. We can test for, are you getting the right vitamins and minerals and antioxidants into the blood cells? Are you, um, you know, drinking enough water? Is it clean filtered water? Maximize good relationships, um, maximize uh, good hormones. Mm -hmm. Um, And the knowledge and belief in the therapy you're choosing is safe and effective. A lot of what we're doing has really tremendous side effects that are not safe and effective. Mm -hmm. Minimize toxicity and inflammation. And this is toxic food, toxic thoughts, toxic relationships, (laughs) Uh, limiting beliefs. You know, we feel like we're stuck and, um, negative expectations, the nocebo effect. I do write about that in my book. It has a huge effect on people's health outcomes. And then prioritizing self-care. And this is the hardest thing for most of us to do. You know, we feel like self-care is selfish. Right. So I always say we can guess or we can test. And these are some of the testing that I did for my own um, healing and cardiovascular disease um, to uncover uh, I, I had a lot of nutrient deficiencies. I had food sensitivities. Um, my organic acid test showed, um, a lot of, uh, that my metabolism wasn't working correctly. I had gut issues. I had, I had H. pylori, I had deal the gut. Um, so when we do the testing, then we can create a personalized plan based on this testing. This is what we need to do. Um, and hormones is, is key. Many people ask me, um, I, I do a two hour talk on this, so I'm gonna s- tell you in two minutes. <laughs> Basically our stress hormones, whether it's internal stress, such as food sensitivities we're not even aware of, or external stress. Stress affects our sex hormones, which affects our libido, our fertility, our ability to get pregnant. This is an epidemic. I've helped a lot of uh, women get pregnant. Um, it affects our sleep, which affects our metabolic hormones. So um, we could be eating the cleanest diet. And I've had clients on a keto diet who ha- are insulin resistant, who have been developing their own prediabetes because of the, um, the lack of nutrients they need, the chromium, <laughs> and mm-hmm. the increased stress in their lives. So stress hormones affect sex hormones, which affect metabolic hormones. And we get this chronic inflammation. So uh, we need to look at what are your unique internal and external stressors so that we can um, put the body in an environment for healing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And everybody asked me about cholesterol in heart disease, (laughs) you know, and as when I worked in cardiac care as a cardiac care nurse, we, I used to teach people to eat a low-fat diet and margarine, get rid of the butter. I did that early on. I've had issues uh, since I was in my 30s of uh, high blood pressure and 
and uh, high cholesterol. And my gynecologist said, at least you're going to drop dead before you're 40 if you don't do something about this. And I was on the statins, which created muscle cramps and brain fog. I, it, the statins were horrible for me. Mm. Um, and the reason being is we need healthy fat and we need B5, pantothenic, our B vitamins, which are made in the gut. We need a healthy gut to make cholesterol. And the cholesterol is so essential that the liver will make it even if you don't get it in your diet because cholesterol is the Band-Aid. It's the fireman if you've got inflammation in the arteries to go put out the artery. And that's, um, it's the cholesterol that can form the plaques mm -hmm. in the arteries um, that people are so concerned about with cardiovascular disease. Um, cholesterol in itself is not bad. If it's oxidized, if it's forming plaque, that's um, um, the issue. But, the cholesterol, but by just lowering cholesterol without looking at what's causing the fire, it's like killing the firemen. And, um, and just as many people have cardiovascular accidents with low cholesterol as they have with high cholesterol. So this is a major myth around mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease that even a lot of conventional cardiologists are not um, in tune to. Um, so cholesterol makes our stress hormones, our cortisone, our, our, our adrenaline, as well as all of our sex hormones. And um, so the paleocardiologist wrote a book called, and the first chapter is Cholesterol is King. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need to look at uh, the hormones, what's causing, this is not exactly what happens, it's just a picture, our, our hormones are more like a soup. But we need to look at if we've got, um, if we're just making cholesterol, cortisol at the expense of DHEA, um, this is keeping us in a catabolic state. We are um, breaking down tissue and not enough DHEA to build up tissue. So this, this is um, one of the things we look at. Got it. And uh, this is a picture from my book, which is we're either in fight or flight or we're in rest and repair, rest and digest, or, or mate and ovulate. So um, this is a nervous system and it's like a light switch. We can have ways to turn it on and off, but most of us just live in the sympathetic uh, state where um, we, we might be eating, uh, maybe we've got a, a sensitivity to gluten and we're having toast for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch and pasta for dinner, and we're keeping this internal flame going all day long. Um, our pupils dilate, so we're really sensitive to the sunlight and we have to wear dark glasses, which is not normal. <laughs> We're more susceptible to macular degeneration and uh, early aging of the eyes. We stop secreting saliva, so we can't digest the amylase, uh, the enzymes to digest our carbohydrates. Our bronchioles dilate, so we get asthma. We get more um, susceptible to the flus and colds. Our heartbeat speeds up, we get hypertension. We secrete adrenaline, um, which keeps us in this roller coaster. We um, stop secreting stomach acid, and we need strong stomach acid to break down our proteins, to digest our food, to assimilate the, um, um, to keep our balance in our gut. And in fact, I had H. pylori, which is very common as we age, um, a hidden bug in my gut that can be the precursor to ulcers and stomach cancer. Mm -hmm. So doing a test to identify that was really key for me. Um, it can cause constipation, irritable bowel, urinary tract infections, um, varicose veins. If you have any of these symptoms, it's a reason to look at what's the root cause. Great. And then people ask me, how do I, you address the immune system? Because um, the immune system is so key, right, for healing? Absolutely. Um, and so this is kind of a picture I use the, in another talk I do, which is about a two hour talk. I'll give you a two minute synopsis. Mm -hmm. All health begins in the gut. <laughs> um, if we are used to if eating on the run, stressful diet, we're taking birth control pills, aspirin, Motrin, um, antibiotics, we're eating, uh, food that we're sensitive to, we're drinking too much ca caffeine and alcohol, all these things can damage the gut lining. And then the undigested food, we don't have enough stomach acid, 
the bacteria, the viruses um, can get into the bloodstream and this creates an inf inflammation. So most of the um, symptoms of uh, things that start in the gut are not uh, gas or bloating or digestion or uh, if you've got these symptoms, they're certainly, it's easy to point to the gut, but many, uh, this is the root cause of all autoimmune disease. <laughs> And you know, when I graduated from nursing school, there were five autoimmune diseases, lupus, oh MS, <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis, right? Now there's over a hundred. Wow. So what's happened in this time? As our genes haven't changed, our diet, our lifestyle, our stress have changed. We're putting chemicals on our food. Um, uh, so, and, and we know now, so it affects the vagus nerve, it, uh, it can cross a blood-brain barrier. Um, we can be more prone to uh, dementia, early dementia, cognitive decline, even autism. Um, uh, part of the treatment for autism is to heal the gut. Uh, and it's pretty amazing what functional medicine is doing to reverse some of these diseases that we thought were um, uh, really untreatable. Mm -hmm. Oh, how are we on time? Uh, we're, we're good. We got uh, probably another like 10, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, great. So a lot of people ask me, what's the right diet? The million dollar question. So here's a little joke, uh, a one minute thing that I think is funny. The Times article pointed out that the grave is littered with health food pioneers who didn't even live to the average lifespan. Yule Gibbon swore he'd live forever thanks to a diet of wild plants, and now he is a diet for wild plants, <laughs> dead at 64. Adele Davis was so ahead of her time in saying we should avoid starchy foods like white bread. Ironically, is toast, dead at 70. <laughs> Nathan Pritikin of the Pritikin Diet, dead at 69. Clive McKay thought the path to living past 100 was severe caloric restriction, dead at 69. Last words, I'm fucking starving. Oh my. Michelle Montagnac sold 17 million copies of Eat Yourself Slim and died at 66. This before finishing his next book, Drink Yourself Erect. <laughs> Jim Fix wrote the complete book of running, which his heart stopped doing at 52. Dead while running. <laughs> Meanwhile, David Crosby is fine. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we have to laugh. There's no one diet for everyone. Um, and it is sad. We could, as I said in my case, be doing a lot of the right things and have this hidden, right? Uh, Inflammation, and I see a lot of. Um, I do see a lot of high-powered uh, clients who want to be all they can be, and they are burning the candle at both ends. They're they're loving that they run marathons because it increases endorphins. But we can't stay in fight or flight all the time. We have to have a rest and repair. Um, and so most of my clients need to actually eat more and more healthy fat and exercise less, which is just the opposite of what it's. Like standard um, information that's given to us and we're all unique. Um, there are some common rules. Eat real food, mm -hmm. <laughs> organic, grass-fed if possible. Um, if you're eating animal protein, eliminate empty calories, the artificial chemicals and preservatives. Just eat real food. Um, and then diversity is a key. We don't eat the same food every day. Um, that's when we can really develop food sensitivities even to healthy food that we're eating. Um, I addressed a little bit about why cholesterol, the myth about cholesterol. Fat does not make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. In fact, sugar is the root cause of that inflammation in the arteries. Too much sugar and alcohol, it's like shards of glass going through the arteries, and um, which tells the liver to, to secrete the cholesterol to go patch it up. So um, eliminating the inflammatory foods uh, is key. We don't need dairy to get our calcium. Uh, many people, uh, I think 75% of the world population does not drink milk. Um, and we get more calcium 
calcium is better absorbed from uh, green leafy vegetables than from the, the dairy in milk for many, and it's, it's a high allergen food for a lot of folks. So this is just a few common uh, myths that we might want to rethink. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, my clients have really three things. Either they don't know what they don't know, uh, or they think they know what's right, and they're operating under one of these medical myths. Uh, or we know what's right, but we just need some help and support to get there. Absolutely. Yes. Intermittent fasting. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so is this the newest, greatest fad? Um, I had an organic vendor come to me and say, Lisa, will you help me put, put together a program for intermittent fasting? And I had to think about it because I, I'm not one to advertise the be all end all one one uh, thing. But then I started looking at the books on my desk and, and reading and doing my research that I'd already read. These were just what's in my home office. And it's, yeah, every one of these guys mentioned intermittent fasting as uh, key, whether it's cardiovascular disease, whether it's to um, clean up your dirty genes. We can change the expression of our genes. We're not bound by them. Uh, David Perlmutter, a very famous in, um, neurosurgeon who is also certified nutritional specialist, and yes, we can end Alzheimer's and reverse cognitive uh, decline. Who knew? And reading his book, it's, it's all about functional medicine. It's all about a lot of the things from my practice. And intermittent fasting is a great, easy way to um, switch the, flip the switch. Um, uh, you know, we are overfed but undernourished. You know, whether you're overweight or you're underweight, they're both signs of malnutrition. And um, so we have uh, a nutrient-poor diet. It's our farming practices um, and the fast, convenient uh, food that sits on a shelf for a long time is not giving us the nutrients we need. It's part of our evolution. We have fasted for a millennium. Mm -hmm. It's been part of the religious practices. Um, it is... Um, it's now proven by science to uh, create autophagy, which is the process of cellular cleanup. This is when the body kills, gets rid of those cancer cells. So we all have cancer cells in the body. It's just like there's weeds in the garden and you have a healthy soil and you have healthy plants, they're gonna crowd out the weeds. And um, the weeding the garden is what autophagy is to get rid of the cancer cells. Mm. Um, we can help uh, burn fat for fuel instead of sugar, which keeps us on this emotional <laughs> metabolic roller coaster. And um, for those of us who have had hypoglycemic episodes or insulin resistance, um, prediabetes, it improves that blood glucose level, and it just lowers inflammation in the body, which is key. Um, another chart on... Um, you, we can see from the 1950s to now this um, huge increase of diabetes. Again, what's happened in, our, in my lifetime, <laughs> uh, it, the genes haven't changed. It's been our diet and our, and our lifestyle mm -hmm. um, and how frequent eating, eating all the time, late night snacking really um, leads to leptin and, and insulin resistance. It, uh, um, increases fatty fat, fat. It, it interrupts our hormones that tell us we're full. And we are always using glucose for energy, which is like gasoline on a fire. It's fast, and, but it doesn't last very long versus burning wood fuel or fat, which is long term sustainable energy. Mm -hmm. so, so fasting helps you burn the fat. It cuts our cravings. Who doesn't have sugar cravings? Um, we're all addicted to sugar. Someone really. who's lucky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, we have sugar in our baby formulas. We have sugar. I mean, we're just, uh, uh, and the sugar industry would not really like uh, this presentation very much. <laughs> right. Um, so that it can be controversial. Mm -hmm. They're basically the same thing, um, the benefits of autophagy. And uh, there's a lot of scientists, the scientific uh, data on this. And um, so I created with a partner a, a Kickstart to Wellness program, which is uh, two webinars. It's education, it's guidebooks, it's recipes. But we also have designed uh, 
seven days of uh, carefully researched um, supplemental uh, meal and beverage program, which are soups and juices and um, a little MCT shot with uh, uh, with um, turmeric uh, to lower inflammation and camu camu, um, which is very high in vitamin C. Uh, and uh, and it, whoop, I didn't change the date on here. Um, we'll be launching this again in March. <laughs> and for our audience, we're offering um, uh, this program. The three things. Oh, go, I'm sorry. I was just gonna. I was just gonna tell people that if you're if you're leading into to that, so we do have some buttons below the video that that link over to what you're talking about right now. So car carry on. I just wanted to let them know. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. So three things that I think are missing um, is uh, nutrition, functional medicine, and then health coaching. You know, we all have the best intention. Who hasn't set New Year's resolutions um, only to find uh, with the best intentions that we get roadblocks mm -hmm. and um, having a support group like your programs <laughs> to keep people inspired, educated, motivated, um, an accountability body, a coach to help uh, people stay on track is really the way to get to our goals. It's another little picture from my book. And um, fact is not perfection. You know, uh, I always say good, better, best. We we're all going to fall off the bandwagon, uh, especially with the holidays coming up. It's um, uh, getting a healthy community, like-minded community, um, and make it easier to make uh, transformational change. So surrounding yourself with other like-minded uh, community that are also interested in optimal health, in spirituality, in um, changing the current trajectory of this very divisive um, world <laughs> that mm -hmm. we've been into, you know, having compassion, courage. And uh, you can see my red dress with my superwoman cape. Yes. <laughs> that I'm wearing for heart health for Valentine's Day and heart health. But um, we all, um, and all of my clients are supermen and superwomen, but, uh, we're really not meant to be on this earth by ourselves. And if we could have done it on our own, we would have done it already because we're all smart. We're all in, in intelligence. And sometimes we all need a little support that our own transformation really doesn't happen in, in isolation. And often we beat ourselves up for what's wrong with me. Why can't I make these changes instead of saying, well, what's right with me? Right. What's my loving self healing, self repairing body telling me with my high blood pressure? What needs to change in my life that I've been resistant to looking at? Hmm. And how do we find your personal kryptonite so that you can really access your personal powers, mm -hmm. your superhuman powers? So I do teach yoga, meditation, <laughs> uh, really getting in tune with the body is key to not ignore our symptoms, but to really understand that the entrance to the door of the sanctuary is inside of you, that you are your own best doctor. And if you go to the doctor with symptoms and you don't get the right answers, and your doctor isn't the healthiest person in the room, you might wanna look somewhere else right. and find uh, another. And thanks to you and your summits, <laughs> You're, you've interv you're interviewing some fabulous people here. I'm really excited to listen. Absolutely. Yes. Amazing, amazing people with all sorts of different, different angles and stories and including you. And I, we thank you for, thank you for doing this. Thank you. And then I just wanted to uh, say nothing's impossible. <laughs> um, we break it up. Impossible means I'm possible. Mm -hmm. This is a mentor of mine. I've taken classes uh, with her. She is the world's oldest yoga teacher. And now she's 101. I need to update the slide. Wow. Um, she's, you know, got all her body weight up on her, on her hands. This is, uh, can be a challenging posture. <laughs> but uh, she's on no medications and she's um, quite wealthy. She's also the world's uh, oldest ballroom. Oh, uh, my goodness. Dancer. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, 
And then I decided to do a special offer with you. Yes. Please let us know. And again, yeah, there's buttons below that, that you can click on for, for Lisa's offers and, and a free gift. So yes, tell us about those. So I, um, in my practice, I ask for a minimum of a three month commitment because, uh, time to do testing and time to do, um, with coaching together. It's a package. Uh, but people are always asking me, can, can I just come see you? I just want a consultation. So I am offering um, for the listeners uh, something out of the ordinary, which is a one-time custom evaluation. If you want me to uh, review your medical records, to look at your health history, to look at your symptom questionnaire, to look at any testing that you've had, and to uh, uh, write up a recommendation and, and talk with you about um, co-creating a plan for your unique needs based on your, on this. Um, and if you are a hundred percent committed and you are a self-starter, um, then I'll offer a, a one-time evaluation, which takes me several hours and, uh, in a 90 minute one-on-one, -on -one, uh, chance to, um, to look at you. If you want to do a program with me that can go right into the, uh, packet or, uh, uh, I've had, um, I do this for colleagues and friends uh, occasionally where we, we give them enough that they can go off and, and make the recommended changes. Excellent. Um, Thank so, you. I so, love it. Um, I am opening up my practice for the short time, this short window uh, for that. And, um, and then if you want to do a group intermittent fasting kickstart, we talked a little bit about that. That's fabulous. Um, you can find my book on Amazon. Um, and, uh, and, oh, I've got a handout, which I didn't put on here, which is a, a functional guide to healthy living, which you can just go to the website. Uh, you've got a link for your, to my website yep. uh, for that and, um, and, uh, download that for free. Awesome. Thank you. And again, everybody, there's buttons and links and all sorts of things, things below that you can click on to go get access to Lisa and, and all of her amazing work. Are there, are there any last insights, anything else you want to leave people with before we hop off? Uh, no, I just, uh, really thank you for doing this. Thank you for, uh, those who are attending and, uh, please share, share these videos. It's, um, uh, I think we're all passionate about uh, inspiring others that it's, uh, it doesn't have to be this way. If you're struggling with uh, fear of aging or fear of uh, early disease, that there is no reason we can't live well into our hundreds without medications, without suffering. And not that medications are needed at some time, right. but um, that we, uh, there's not, no, nothing in our way better ourselves. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for doing this, Lisa. Thank you for all your amazing work and expertise. And we appreciate you doing this with us today. Thank you. And Thanks. everyone, thank you so much for showing up for yourself and for tuning in. And we will see you again real soon. Take care, everybody.